Good day to you my friends, I'm Kenneth and today I'm going to be reviewing the new post-apocalyptic survival game, Homeseek, from developer Traptix. Sadly I've only completed about half of the game so far due to mission length and difficulty, but more on that in a bit. And I'll be keeping spoilers to an absolute minimum. Also shout out to Traptix for supplying me an early review copy. Homeseek is a survival city builder at heart, and I'll be making plenty of comparisons with Frostpunk in this review, since it's been played by many, and is certainly the one to be in this genre. Instead of coal, water is life here, and while similar gameplay elements are there, the devs of this game have clearly set it apart with its obvious change in theme, art style, and a fresh take on some of the survival mechanics. For me, it felt familiar, yet new at the same time. Homeseek kicks off with your bunch of survivors being forced out from the safety of their bunker, your resources have all but run out and it's time to venture into the shattered outside world. The basics of food, water and shelter are first on the list of things for you to do, as you would expect, but this desert wasteland has a problem. The water is all contaminated and will make your people sick. Water management quickly becomes a standout pillar of gameplay here as the game doesn't connect buildings for you. You have to not only choose which buildings to connect with its limited connection slots, but also what material you should use to make the piping. And this is where things can go dire very quickly if you're not careful. You see each of the materials you can use has a rising cost in scrap to make, which stretches your limited supplies thinner, but that raise in cost also raises the efficiency of the pipe. These pipes of course are not factory made, no no no. These are cobbled together systems by your survivors, and as such will leak a certain amount of their contents, and this only gets worse over longer distances. So making sure you have a high performance system for your water transfer is key, especially when it's jumping over three to five different buildings. The amount of water that can be lost can add up to be pretty significant. Water purification will be how you reduce sickness, and later on avoid it entirely, at least from water. But this will take significant resources, time and workforce to set up. And not to mention finding the technology to do so out in the wild, but more on that in a bit. Placements of buildings must be thoroughly thought out to minimise water waste and save on building materials. Not to mention making the best use of the limited and irregular shaped build space available on each level. You will often find cliffs, crevices, husks of long destroyed buildings that block your way from the nice layout you are hoping for. You also have on site resources you may need to consume first to open up areas for special buildings such as farms or water treatment. But just like Frostpunk you can pause the game and just take a look around. The play area is much bigger in Homeseek, and you really should take the time to look around and plan how you might approach the level with the tech you have, and leave space for possible new tech that you might get along the way. Also like in Frostpunk, your workforce, your people, they get sick and they will stop working, but they will also get exhausted and depressed, and if this isn't tackled, they will straight up leave, or possibly die. Now this can have positive and negative effects, mostly negative though. But if you've expanded too much or let too many people join your camp, you can easily stretch your economy too thin and reducing it can help bring it back within its limits. But if you're already struggling, then this can cause a domino effect of collapse leading you to have to restart the level. The other key to survival, just like it's called a big brother, is sending out teams on expeditions. Scavenging the desolate wasteland for those basic needs, as well as learning new technologies and laws to implement. The expeditions however also need to be given supplies, the food, the water, the scrap. And these will not only dictate how long your team can stay out in the field, but also how they can solve challenges. This certainly builds on what Frostpunk did, with each point of interest you explore will have multiple event options, that you could find resources or people, or even injure and kill your explorers. So you have to choose carefully and balance the risk and reward. Make it to the end of the events without killing every one of your survivors, and each location will reward you with new technology to be researched back at base. And these are needed to progress beyond just simply surviving, and start thriving. But in my opinion what Homeseek successfully replicates from Frostpunk is in its difficulty. Feeling like the whole camp is on a knife edge of survival until you start to master the various elements of the game. And even then the game shows you no mercy. It also made sure to try the easy and hard modes as well. And if you're up for a challenge then hard will certainly push you to your survival limits. And easy will gently ease off the resource consumption allowing you to better enjoy the game and not have so much panic at every step but still provides a challenge via its other gameplay rather than just the survival elements. I normally get frustrated with difficult games, but with games like Homeseek and Frostpunk and Ixion, I see it as a challenge to 
beat, and I keep coming back until I do. It's something about the survival city builder genre that I think thrives when doing this, and Homeseek fits right in. Now the main story campaign of Homeseek has 9 missions, and it's broken up into 2 halves, 5 and then 4. Each mission is tied to your survivor's journey and their story through the world, and Homeseek also adds different unique gameplay elements on each map. These could be external or internal to your camp. This helps add variety from just playing a different shaped map with slightly better tech. Once a mission, or chapter as the game called them, is completed, you unlock an endless version of this mission with a different world map for expeditions. This lets you tackle any mission with full technology available to be unlocked via the world map to see how far you can push that map. Complete the whole part of either 5 or the 4 missions, and another new mode is unlocked, Survival Mode. This mode takes away the one forgiving factor in Homeseek. Normally, when you progress from mission to mission, you may not have found every technology on the map, and during story mode when you start a new level, this missing tech is given to you and any minor upgrades that you may have done for the different buildings are stripped away just to be researched again. This can make things a little bit easier to enjoy the story when you're dashing for the end of the level just to make sure you survive. Survival mode changes this entirely, letting you keep only the tech that you have found from map to map. Luckily though, having played through the game once, you now know which tech is key and which is just a minor upgrade, but surviving long enough to find everything can be and is difficult, especially on hard mode. That said, it's certainly something to aim for, as well as adding plenty of replayability to the game. The last feature you need to know about is multiplayer. In this mode you can have up to 8 players and you all start on the same global map for expeditions. You can slowly build up, find new survivors, but eventually you will run into other players, and that's where the fun can begin. As your expeditions can bump into each other, well you can decide what happens then, and when you eventually find their home base, you can certainly raid that as well. Sadly, I didn't get a chance to try this mode since there was no one online to play, as I've been reviewing this before release. But it's certainly interesting to see this type of game attempt a multiplayer mode, so hats off for them for trying it. Homeseek had great performance on my PC, but performance is not normally in high demand for this type of game, but it's great to see that it wasn't ignored either. I also ran into no bugs during my playthrough, but I did have some issues with the otherwise fine UI. For starters, there's no way to tell why certain survivors are sick, depressed or exhausted. Was it the food? The water? Did I forget to build a house? Am I working them too long? And this can't be looked up quickly and leaves you guessing. Another issue I found was buildings will show you their max output, not necessarily their current output. For instance, if I'm cleaning contaminated water into pure water, something you do on the very first level, and I'm not supplying enough for the building to do what it can do at a maximum, then that's what it's just going to show me, the maximum. It will not reduce the number, and this leads you to overestimating how much you will have available, and a lot of the time, dead or fleeing survivors. I'm currently unsure if this is intended for difficulty and camp micromanagement, or just a lack of information to the player. Either way, it led to a few mission restarts for me. Thankfully, there is also an option to save anytime, so if you save regularly, you can go back and check where you went wrong, and then learn from it. And lastly, I just wish I could zoom out more. Thankfully these issues can and probably will be addressed in post launch patches, as if enough people find them sticking points, they will certainly be fixed for quality of life. All in all, I really enjoyed Homeseek and I plan to continue playing it to complete it. If it looks like something you would enjoy as well, then please do head down below the video to the link in the description to its Steam page and give the like button a little tickle on the way down. Also do let me know in the comments if you plan on picking this one up. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one. Kenator, out.